Hey, what's going on guys? Pete with Auto Repair Tips. In this video, I'm going to show you how to test a five and four prong relay. I've gotten a ton of emails, people asking me how to do this, but I've been putting it off. Not because I've been lazy, but I've been working on my studio. I thought what better way to christen this studio than to make this video right here. Not only that, later on in the video, I'm going to announce the winner of my giveaway. I had a 5,000 subscriber giveaway, and today we're going to announce that winner sometime in the video. Also, I'm going to start a series called Tech Talk. I'll have guests on. We'll talk about cars. I'm going to do tool reviews and more videos just like this one right here. All right, guys, let's get into the video. What you're going to need to test your relay with are some test leads, a 12 volt battery, and a test light. In this case, I'm using a light socket from a car. All right, guys, when you're looking at your relay, a lot of your factory relays don't have numbers to tell you what pin is what. But don't worry about it. I've drawn it out for you right here so you can look at it and see. Sitting like this, if you look at it, this is 86. This one's 85. This one is 30. This is 87A. And this is 87. If you take a look right here, you can see 85 and 86. That is going to be your control circuit. When it's activated, it throws current from 30 to 87, which powers whatever you're trying to feed. Uh, an AC compressor, a cooling fan, a fuel pump, anything like that. Now when you're bench testing it, it doesn't matter what side you put the hot on or what side you put the ground on. It should click and activate either way. But plugging into the car, 86 is always going to be hot. 85 will be your ground, 30 is going to be your hot, and again 87 is going to supply. So the first thing you want to do when you're testing it is you want to get your meter and you want to set it on 200. And you want to measure the resistance between 85 and 86. All right, the winner of the 5,000 subscriber giveaway is Michael Guy. Michael, I appreciate you subscribing. I'm going to get up with you soon, and we'll get them gauges sent out. My next giveaway, when I get to 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to give away a Snap-on product. So make sure you subscribe, like the videos, and don't forget to hit that bell for notifications. That resistance should be somewhere between 50 and 120. When you measure it, and if it's not between those numbers, if it's below 150 or higher than 120, just immediately know you got a bad relay. So let's check this one out here. So looking at this one here, it's 73. So that's within specs. The next thing you're gonna do is you wanna activate this relay. So we wanna take pin number 86, which is this pin right here. And we wanna take pin number 85, which is this pin right here, and you wanna to touch it. You should hear a click. The relay should click off and on. Once you hear it click, you know, it's, you know that you can activate the control circuit, so there's no problem there. So go ahead and activate the relay. Now we want to measure the resistance between pin number 30 and 87. Put your meter at 20. And when you measure the resistance, it should come out to be zero. And we do, so we know it's good. So we know once that circuit's activated, the gap between 30 and 87 is closed and that should supply a voltage. The last thing you can do to test it is let's go ahead and put 12 volts on 30 and let's see if it can carry a load. I have my test light. In this case, I'm using a socket from a car one end to a ground and touch this end here. And see it lighten up? So we know that it can carry a load. There's no problems there. So you know if all those tests pass, the problem's not your relay, you know to go look somewhere else. It's the same thing when you're doing a four prong relay and it doesn't have any numbers. The easiest way to find it is you touch until you hear it activated. Touch different combinations. All right, 
I hear it activated. If you touch all the combinations and it doesn't activate, it's a bad relay. And the same thing, once you find 85 and 86, you're gonna put your meter at 200. And the reason why you're going to 200 is because it goes all the way up to 120 is good. And we are sitting at 84. So we know we have a good controlled circuit. So let's go and activate that circuit. Once you activate that circuit, get your meter, put it back on 20. And it should be zero between 30 and 87. And we have zero, good to go. And like the last test, let's go ahead and make sure that even though you have good resistance, let's make sure that it can carry a load. And if you're bench testing, it doesn't matter which one you ground because when that's closed, that's just a, that circuit is just straight through. After you supply your 12 volts, ground out your test light, touch it here, and you can see we can activate that circuit. No problems. And again, like I say, if you're bench testing, it doesn't matter what side you hook up. That is just a through circuit, so it's not going to matter. But you can see the light lighting up, so you know that you can activate that circuit. And that it can control whatever it is you're trying to control. Alright guys, that is the easiest way to test a relay. If those tests pass, you know that it's not a relay. Your problem lies elsewhere. Alright guys, that is it for this video. Appreciate you watching. Catch you later.